goat format has changed. Like a virus, this monster quietly spread from one part of the meta to the next until it had taken over entirely. It pushed Air Knight Parshath almost completely out of the meta. It took Chaos Return to new heights. It is the foundation of the popular Thunder Dragon Chaos decks. It walls aggro, it pressures control, it slaughters goat tokens, its counters are few and far between. Its best counter might even be itself. It's now become the most seen monster in the entirety of GOAT format Yu-Gi-Oh! This monster, defining the modern GOAT format metagame, is Gravekeeper's Spy. Today on GOAT Duels, we're going to tell you everything that you need to know about this format-breaking monster. Gravekeeper Spy's early days went about how you'd expect. People read the card and thought the obvious. This belongs in a Gravekeeper deck. And Gravekeepers did get some solid results in 2005, such as this top 8 deck from Shonen Jump Indianapolis. But it wasn't until US Nationals that year that Max Suffrage unlocked the true power of Gravekeeper Spy. His Goat Control deck used Gravekeeper Spy in a completely unprecedented manner. As it turns out, Gravekeeper Spy can get a lot of value by just getting another copy of itself. This is technically a plus one, and two walls can often stop an aggressive deck dead in its tracks. Despite Max's first place finish, it took players a while to appreciate the genius of his strategy, which managed to fly under the radar for many years, long awaiting the day that a new hero of GOAT format would take up its mantle again. It wasn't until 2020, deep into the GOAT format revival era, that we would again see GOAT Control take first place in a major tournament with Gravekeeper Spy. With this decklist, Everfall took Goat Control back to its roots as being more of an anti-meta deck. At this point in time, the popular Detox Goat Control decks were overly focused on getting an edge in the Goat Control mirror, playing cards like Air Knight Parshath and only using two copies of Scapegoat. Everfall realized that the meta had evolved long past the point of Goat Control mirrors being the only matchup that mattered. In contrast, his list was highly focused on countering the rising star of GOAT format, Chaos Warriors. Everfall's decklist had tons of defense, with 3 Scapegoat and 3 Sakuretsu armor. But most importantly, it used 2 copies of Gravekeeper Spy to punish not only all of the Blade Knights, but the Air Knight Parshaths as well. Gravekeeper Spy continued to be a popular choice in Goat Control from this point forward, but the success of this pivot within Goat Control was overshadowed by the rise of another deck, the one commonly known as Chaos Turbo. You see, Chaos decks featuring Thunder Dragon had been popular in GOAT format for quite some time, as Chaos Sorcerer is just a really good card, and these decks tended to be a bit easier to pilot than something like GOAT Control. But for a long time, these Chaos decks always seemed to fall a bit short of the mark. It was almost like there was a missing ingredient. This turned out to be Gravekeeper Spy. At first, these newer Chaos decks started by playing just two copies of Gravekeeper Spy, thinking that it was a good meta call but less powerful than other flip effects like Magician of Faith and Dokochi. But as time went on, Gravekeeper Spy came to be played almost universally as a three of. In the mind of the competitive player, it grew to the status of being the yin to Thunder Dragon's yang. Both were card advantage sources that were great at preparing the graveyard for Chaos Sorcerer. Even if your opponent could deal with the spies, you'd have multiple darks in your graveyard, which is a pretty nice silver lining. Players discovered that the third copy of Gravekeeper Spy came in handy in conjunction with Tsukiyomi or Night Assailant, and if the first spy died to a Mystic Swordsman or Exiled Force, it was nice to still have two more copies in the deck. Then came the Chaos Return decks, with Spy and Dokochi both being popular, along with Noblemen of Crossout, players figured out that this was an easy way to fuel a fat banish pile for Return from the Different Dimension. 
Gravekeeper Spy hence became an obvious 3 of staple in this deck as well. Now it's time to talk about the counters to Gravekeeper Spy. The best one is probably Tribe Infecting Virus. What's interesting is that, for a time, Tribe Infecting Virus was often left out of main decks simply because of the fact that it was not light or dark and that it could easily get run over by a bigger monster. But in the post-Gravekeeper Spy world, Tribe went back to becoming a near staple. The second counter is Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke. The ninja is definitely a warrior deck's best option for clearing a group of spies, but this will take multiple turns and still allows the chaos player to get decent value for their spy. Playing the ninja is not recommended unless you are also playing reinforcement of the army to search it. But there are three other counters to Gravekeeper Spy that are widespread throughout GOAT format. Mind Control, Nobleman of Crossout, and Zaborg the Thunder Monarch. Mind Control is not the strongest counter by any means, but taking your opponent's spy and flipping it to get your own spy is often a good way to turn the tables, especially if you have a Tsukiyomi. But of course, doing this play does require you to run spy yourself. Nobleman of Crossout does not require you to play spy yourself, but you could benefit from doing so. Very recently, aggro decks that are weak to Gravekeeper Spy have started to also play the Gravekeeper Spy themselves in the hopes that they can set it and bait out their opponent's Nobleman of Crossout and banish all spies from the game. And if the aggro player instead hits their opponent's spy with the Crossout first, they can now thin out their own deck as a small bonus. Lastly, we have Zaborg the Thunder Monarch. Zaborg can be played in many different decks, but there's just one small problem. It requires a tribute, which in GOAT format is a pretty big commitment. So if you're playing Zaborg, you want to have some good monsters to tribute for it. And what's a great monster for ensuring that you'll always have something to tribute? You guessed it, Gravekeeper Spy. So what you now see is that Gravekeeper Spy is often the best enabler for countering Gravekeeper Spy. Whether you're playing Goat Control, Chaos, or even Warriors, you'll have plenty of good reasons to play Gravekeeper Spy. And this is simply not going to change anytime soon. The more I play with Gravekeeper Spy, the more I realize that it's basically the card that does everything. Attacking twice for 2400, or defending for 2000 gives Gravekeeper Spy some of the best raw stats of any non-tribute monster in the format. The fact that it doubles up means that it can brush off removal like Smashing Ground or Sakuretsu Armor with ease. Simply put, if you're not playing Gravekeeper Spy in GOAT format, you'd better have a damn good reason for it, because Gravekeeper Spy's massive dominance cannot be slept on. It truly is a mini boss monster of GOAT format. But if Gravekeeper Spy isn't your cup of tea, then you need to watch this video here about Golem Sentry, one of the other flexible defensive monsters of GOAT format.